Hard to believe, 12 days we open school. 16. Yes. Uh, so September 5th is the first day of school for students. September 4th is the first day for staff. Although we can't really say it's first day because I've been walking around the buildings and our teachers are in, uh, getting the classrooms ready, and everything is uh, starting to come together. So I think I can officially say the 2018-19 school year uh, is pretty much ready to begin. But while uh, our families and our students were uh, enjoying summer vacation, we were hard at work. And what did we accomplish? So let me give you some uh, statistics. Our custodial and grounds and maintenance staff cleaned and organized over 650,000 square feet of school buildings and cared for 150 acres of school grounds, playgrounds, and athletic fields. So uh, kudos to our custodial and maintenance crew. Uh, they've been working hard and while we were inside the buildings freezing, they were outside, as you can imagine, in, in that heat, uh, getting that done. Our guidance counselors, uh, child study team members, and secretarial staff prepared over 4,000 student schedules and class lists. Uh, the administrative team prepared master schedules, conducted numerous uh, interviews to hire uh, outstanding staff, uh, several of whom are in the audience, and just prior to this at 5 o'clock, uh, we had a new staff reception, and then tomorrow and Wednesday we have a new staff orientation. So that's going to be uh, from 9 to 2 on, on both days. The transportation department pre prepared 160 bus routes and worked hard on getting all of our buses ready. And uh, finally, as I mentioned, when students walk into uh, the classrooms, our teachers have been in the classrooms getting uh, the classrooms ready. So we can't say that our teachers have been on, on vacation the whole time. Uh, they've been working hard, so that gets done. So that's what we've been doing while um, our families and our students were enjoying um, summer vacation. So I just want to talk a little bit about what's new for the upcoming school year. Um, and, and we're really excited about uh, launching our inclusive preschool program pilot uh, 15 students are uh, starting that program, and I know that Principal Nemec, Supervisor O'Neill, the child study team, um, they've been working hard to ensure a great pilot implementation, and so we are ready to go. Uh, our preschool total enrollment, are, we're at 65, so that is tremendous, and 27 more are uh, sitting off to the side waiting for uh, the process to continue. So in addition to the 65, we could potentially have 27 more. Uh, and that's a tremendous number for uh, preschool. Uh, also very, very happy to report that uh, for the first time in the history of Lacey Township Middle School, we will be implementing a National Junior Honor Society. Uh, we completed the application for a chapter and we are uh, anxiously awaiting uh, acceptance of that. We should be here any day. Um, and um, I know that Principal King and um, Assistant Principal Saboko are working with Mike Ryan, who uh, is going to be transferring to middle school to head the uh, National Junior Honor Society as the advisor. So really exciting news. Um, and then just the other day, I received an email from Dr. DeVivo, who is our uh, theater and drama club teacher, but also the advisor. Um, the, the fall production is going to be an adaptation of Lisa May Alcott's Little Women. And I know there's been a lot of uh, information out on Facebook. Um, Dr. DeVivo was uh, providing hints as to what the fall play was going to be, and a lot of people were able to guess. And um, I don't know about you, but it was one of my favorite books growing up, so we're really looking forward to the fall production. And so what else is new in the world of school security? It's been a topic that we've been talking about for quite a long time. Um, and as we've mentioned, and has, as, as it's always been, student safety is an important topic for us, and it's a topic that we will continue to discuss um, in, in, in the school year, but um, in, in years to come, I'm certain of it. Many meetings were held with uh, Chief Devella, who is uh, with us tonight. I'm going to introduce him in SRO uh, May. Um, but many meetings were held with Chief Devella, with members of the Board of Education, with Mr. George and myself. Um, and as I said, uh, thoughtful discussions will be ongoing. Uh, but at this time, I don't want to steal this thunder, I would like to introduce uh, Chief Devella 
and school resource officer, Detective Charlie May, to talk a little bit more and expand a little bit more about um, what I've just discussed and, and maybe outline for um, all of us what it is that we've accomplished. And I know you have some people to introduce today as well. Good evening. Thank you for having, uh, having us here tonight. Um, you know, before I start, normally when I speak in public, I'm not nervous or I'm not stressed out, but Captain George gave me a 10 minute time limit to like <laughs> stick to it. So I'm a, I'm a little uh, worried about that, but on no, a serious note, tonight definitely starts uh, a new chapter for you know the relationship between the Lacey Township Police Department or the Township of Lacey uh, and, our, uh, and our school board, school board and how we look at safety and security for our staff and students moving forward. Um, before I proceed with that, I, I feel it's only uh, appropriate to talk about some of the things that we've done over the past couple of years that actually got us to where we are today. In the summer of 2016, I became the Chief of Police for Lacey Township, pretty much right around uh, the time then Superintendent Greg Wigley uh, began working for the Township uh, of Lacey as well as the board. And we pretty much knew that we, right away, that we shared the same passion, you know, when it comes to safety and security of, of our staff and students. And we sat down in multiple meetings to, to try to see what we can do better together for our community. And we made a list of some things, and I'll, uh, the top three really priorities on that list were a school resource officer program, um, a drug and alcohol education prevention type of program, and also how we can improve active shooter response, not just for the Lacey Township Police Department, but for the Lacey Township School District. So we went ahead right away and started working hard. Um, we, we began looking into the Drug and Alcohol Prevention Program now. Most of you probably have heard of the D.A.R.E. program. It's been around for the last 10, 20, 30 years. For, for whatever reason, in Lacey Township, we really never had a, a program like that. Um, probably not for any particular reasons, different administrations or whatever, but in, in today's day, especially with this heroin epidemic that, that's going on, uh, you know, the township and the school board, we felt it was, it was appropriate to get that type of um, program in our school. So I researched uh, the LEAD program, Law Enforcement Against Drugs, similar program to DARE, uh, but it also offers uh, social skills for the kids, uh, how to deal with bullying, and some other things. I really like the program. And we began, uh, my officers began instructing that over at the Mill Pond School, sixth grade, in uh, March of 2017. We did teach that last year as well, the 17-18 school year, and we are moving forward with that program again this year in the sixth grade. Now I know at some point I'd like to bring that program down to the, to the fifth grade, and I also know I want to bring it into our middle school. So a student will have attended the LEAD program, say in fifth or sixth grade in the elementary level, but then once they go to the intermediate school, they'll receive it again in eighth grade, just prior to going into to the high school. Uh, Detective May is one of our primary instructors for the new program. I'm happy to say, as a standard of today, we've graduated over 300 uh, students from the sixth grade at the Mill Pond School with that program. Soon after, uh, in the summer of 2017, the Township of Lacey and the school board began working very hard on a school resource officer program. Again, not talking bad about anybody, but most districts or municipalities had a SRL in place for the last 20 or 30 years. It's just something for whatever reason, um, we didn't have it. Different priorities, but in the summer of 2017, like I said, we all worked hard together, several meetings, and in September of 2017, we had our first ever school resource officer uh, standing next to me this evening, Detective Charlie Meg, who was assigned on a full-time basis here uh, in the high school, not just providing safety and security to our students and our staff, but, but being a friend, helping out with class instruction. Uh, many, he was involved in so many things, I, I, I think I lost track, but really a very successful year uh, with the SRO program. Um, moving forward, we've talked about uh, response to active shooter. I don't want to get too much into it for confidentiality and sensitivity reasons, but I'll just say that this past school year, uh, my staff has consisted of Detective Charlie May, uh, Lieutenant Paul Sullivan, uh, unable to be here tonight, and um, 
In fact, Sam Delisalo, along with several staff here uh, from the Lacey Township School District, we trained over 700 uh, staff members here in the, in the school district on what we feel is the appropriate response to uh, an active shooter event if that were to happen. So uh, three very successful things that we've done in, in the last two years. And I would be remiss if I didn't say that I think when it comes to safety and security, we've, as a team, have accomplished more in the last two years, probably in the last 20 or 30 years, than when it comes to safety and security. And that's because everybody's standing, uh, sitting up here on the uh, Board of Education, uh, the Township Committee, and then the officers that have here with me this evening. Um, continuing on, this past summer now, um, again, looking, to, looking, looking at ways how we can even make the safety and security of our school district even better. And I brought up uh, the uh, topic of Class 3 Special Law Enforcement Officers. And for those of you that don't know what that means, recently, within the past year or so, there was a, a law that was passed that allows a municipality, such as Lacey Township, to hire a recently retired police officer uh, and bring them in um, and place them in the, in the school district where they can use uh, you know, their, their education and experience that they've gained over the time in, in, in their career. So this evening, I'd like to introduce um, three class three police officers that we hired, but I just want to say that they're in addition to what we already have. So we have Detective Charlie May, who's our full-time school resource officer. Uh, the, school are, the school already employs retired police officers uh, as armed security. So these three new officers that I'll be introducing momentarily, they are in addition to what we have. And I think it's pretty fair to say that the police department and the board and the council are continually looking forward uh, into the future. Um, to, again, to continue how we can make this, this even better. So with that, I'd like to call down for my three new police officers down there front. So these three officers will be patrolling any number of the schools here uh, in our district. Uh, first, I'd like to uh, introduce Officer Michael Caputo to step forward. Michael Caputo is a 30-year law enforcement veteran, uh, recently retired as the Chief of Police for the Tuckerton Police Department. Um, he's a firearms instructor, an instructor at the Ocean County Police Academy, and a graduate of the West Point Command and Leadership School. He uh, resides here uh, in Lacey Township with his family. Now, when I first learned that Mike had uh, retired, you know, I, I, I sought him out and uh, brought him on as a Class Two police officer for us back in February, where I assigned him to do uh, all of our firearms investigations that we have. Um, you know, he's been doing that for me since February, and probably I don't know a week or so after the, we put out the announcement that we were looking for uh, Class Three special police officers. Uh, Mike walked into my office and said, hey, you know, listen, um, you know, I saw that you're looking for a, a class three officer. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm kind of thinking of that that might be something that I'm interested in. You know, what, what, do you, what do you think about that? And I says, listen, I says, whether you're in headquarters doing firearms investigations or whether you're here in the, in the Lacey Township High School, I know that you're gonna, you know, give it 100% you know, and you'll get the job done. And for me, so it's a win-win situation where whatever he chose and he did choose to be uh, in this position. Uh, before I move on to the, to the second officer, I just want to note that since I hired Mike in, in February, I've, I've dragged him, I guess you can call it, dragged him out with me on a couple of presentations that I had to do you know, with different groups throughout the community. And he would just, you know, he would stand there and he really wouldn't say anything. And uh, somebody had asked me, like, why do you bring him to, to your presentations? And it's like, <laughs> Where else can you have two of the shortest police chiefs in the same municipality? So uh, it has been an honor to uh, work with Mike uh, again. I think he is going to be a true asset to the police department and the school district as we move forward. And thanks, Mike. Um, the second officer I'd like to call for is Officer uh, Robert Johnson, aka Bobby Johnson. He also is a 25-year uh, retired law enforcement officer, recently retired from the Ocean County Sheriff's Department, uh, where he spent the majority of his career in the Orange Division, uh, the Crime Scene Unit, uh, as well as the Ocean County Regional 
SWAT team. He's also a firearms instructor. Uh, he spent uh, four years in the United States Navy. He resides here uh, in Lacey Township with his family. And again, I feel he will also be an asset to the school district and the police department. And the third officer I'd like to introduce tonight is Officer Rogerio, aka Roger Santos, also a retired uh, officer for 25 years, uh, recently retired from the Belleville, New Jersey Police Department after serving there for 21 years. And prior to that, he served for the Newark, New Jersey Police Department. He was also uh, United States Marines uh, and uh, received an award for an uh, uh, expert white man. Uh, he is trilingual, so he can, he's fluent in English, Spanish, and Portuguese. So I'm sure he will definitely be an asset to the uh, school district that we have uh, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, a true asset to the school district and the police department. I know that uh, I'm looking forward to working with them as, as we move forward. Um, and again, before I conclude, I, I just got to again say that I really um, appreciate all of you sitting up here. The, the work that we've accomplished over the, the last two years, uh, you know, President, for President Claus and Superintendent Vanessa Clark, who I've known for a long time, dear friend. And, uh, Pat to George and everybody else up here, you know, on the board. I, I really thank you and I do appreciate your passion. Uh, we share the same passion when it comes to safety and security. So great job you guys are doing. I really appreciate it and I look forward to working with you in the future. Thank you. Good evening. I'm 
I'm Bob Palladino. I'm the retired principal at Fork and River School. More recently, I was just elected unanimously with perhaps four votes as the chairperson of the Lacey Education Foundation. So I, I, I came tonight to say hello, and I wanted to say congratulations to Dr. Clark. I'm so happy and proud for you, and uh, I wish you the very best. And I, I'm so wonder, it's wonderful to speak before the Board of Education. Your contributions and service are, are honored and appreciated. To see two former students on the board is inspiring to me. And also, if I added up your, your uh, time of service, all of you, to Lacey Township Schools, uh, clearly we're, we're past two or three generations. So I, I thank you for your service, too. I, I'm very pleased to introduce the Lacey Education Foundation. Uh, not here tonight because she's out of state. It's Donna McAvoy. Uh, we have Ron Biaba. Ron's right there. We have Cindy Sabatelli and Regina Descent. And we've been meeting since, since February uh, putting this foundation together. I was asked by uh, Mr. Wigley to participate, and I can't say no to Lacey. And then I asked uh, Dr. Clark if I should continue, and she said yes, and I thank you for that. I want to talk about Lacey as a family place, and let me tell you a little bit of, of my story and how I got here. Uh, it, it's May, the month of May in 1969. I'm interviewed for a position in Red Bank. The, the principal who's interviewing me in Red Bank says, there's a place I, I'd like you to go and see. So he sent me from Red Bank to Lacey Township. George Mitchell, rest in peace, George. Rest in peace, Mitch. He sent me down to, to see Dave Elliott. He was at Fort River School at the time, and rest in peace day also. And I, I left Red Bank, and if you recall, there used to be a payphone opposite Fort Monmouth on the Garden State Parkway. So remembers. And I called my my soon-to-be wife and said, I have no idea where I'm going, but I'm going. So I get off at exit 74, Lacey Road. And I'm on this road, one lane in each direction, with sand on the shoulders. It looked like the beach. So I met George, I met Dave Elliott that day, and I got the fifth grade position at Fork River School. And I said, oh, by the way, my wife's a teacher too. My fiance's a teacher. Linda came down the next day, she got the first grade position. <laughs> and that's how we came into Lacey. Now, it's funny, uh, he's not in the room now, but uh, the custodian that unlocked this door for us to come in here and we'll lock it when we leave uh, was in Linda's first grade class back in 1960. <laughs> so when I come here, the sense of community is, uh, is just so incredible to me. Uh, I, I, I just can't get over it. I'm so happy to be here. Uh, we, Linda and I taught grandparents, your parents, maybe your great-grandparents too. And it's that legacy of teaching here and working here that is so wonderful. And it continues today with our present staff and in every sense of the word. This is an amazing place. Yes, every place has problems, every, every place has issues. And, but we all work to make it better because it's all about our children. That, that's, what make, that's what inspires me about Lacey Township. And the real gift that I find in Lacey Township is that when, when the staff here in the room, and, and, and it happens to me all the time, if someone introduces me, they don't say, he served as principal from these. They say, he's my principal. And I love that, that Possessiveness. And, and what do I do as a result? I say, you were my student. And it was my pleasure to, 
to be a part of your family, so to speak, and, and to, when your parents said goodbye to you on the school bus, I always wanted them to feel that they were in good hands. So that's my story of Lacey Township and how important it is to me and how close I feel and how grateful I am that I gave my youth to that wonderful mission. Uh, so now we have the Lacey Educational Foundation and we're, we're, we stand here and we stand with the board and the administration and staff with full support of our students. And what we're doing is we're seeking donations for major corporations and charitable entities and our goal is to provide components for our students that we can't normally put in their regular school budget because there are limits. But even more meaningful than going out for donations, we need volunteers. We need at least another 15 people to have us evaluate applications, to bring their expertise. So many of the people that would be on that team or went through the school system here and they know what we need as a former student and parent. But what's also good, people who were outside of the district, you know, when I came from Brooklyn, New York at the time and, and found Lacey, uh, you bring your, 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 your upbringing with you and you, and you bring some diversity and that's a valuable thing. So anyone in the room or anyone who listens to this on the internet, we welcome volunteers to work for the Lacey Education Foundation. The members here tonight have business cards of where to contact us to, to say, hey, I want to be part of this. I want to be part of contributing back to the school district that has been so good to me. Uh, our, our email address is LaceyEF2018 at gmail.com. That's on the business cards that we have tonight. So I ask the public and any volunteers in this room to join us, to remember us, the great treasure of Lacey Township are our people. And I would tell my staff, and I bet you every principal in, in, in the school district says the same thing. I would say to them, teach with your head, but also teach with your heart. And that's what Lacey Township means to me. We're family family is forever. So, so join us in this wonderful opportunity to serve our children. Thank you so much for allowing me to speak. Thank you. July and August leaves the board 
only this one night to digest or question anything within what is a very, very lengthy agenda. Just because school is out, it does not mean the board is on summer break too. Every board member has equal power. And some people think the board president has more power, but what the board president has is more duties. And one of those duties is to see to it that the board makes every effort to have their monthly committee meetings. They really shouldn't just slip by. This had happened many years ago, and we don't want to repeat any mistakes of the past. The Lacey School Board functions by committee, not just during the regular monthly meetings. Skipping three meetings so far this year that I'm aware of is not a good thing, so I would ask that you please not skip any more. While administration can help schedule committee meetings, it really is a board function. The New Jersey School Board Association highly recommends good board communication. Talking to each other piecemeal is not always helpful. And I know for a fact that someone is always left out of the loop. And a few times it was me during my term. I used to get a real kick out of it when people would say to me, I thought you knew. I would eventually find things out. Many times I was the last to know. Skipping committee meetings is not a good practice. Did anyone on the board attend delegate assembly this past May 19th? I heard no mention of it. After a state budget cut, $583,000, someone on this board needs to go to Trenton. We don't have a voice if no one attends any state meetings. The next one is scheduled for November 17th. Someone really should go, and I would ask that you please put it on your calendars now so that at least you know it's coming up. The delegate does not have to attend. It can be any one board member. If the delegate cannot go or the alternate, all the board president has to do is authorize any other board member to attend. Two or three board members can even go to delegate assembly, but only one person can vote. Any county meeting, did anyone from Lacey attend any Ocean County School Board Association meetings? The last one was May 2nd. Did anyone from Lacey go? No. Because they're important too. I learned about Alice training both at workshop in Atlantic City and at a county meeting presentation. Some of the presentations at county meetings are very worthwhile. I know these meetings outside the district do enable board members to make useful contacts. Did anyone contact Senator Sweeney's office about the budget cut Lacey experienced? I sent him an email and I've spoken to his chief of staff. If our legislators don't hear from us, they think the budget cuts were okay. Squeaky wheels get the grease, and in this case, the grease is money, very big money. This district cannot afford to have the state continual, continually cut our annual aid, especially after an approved budget is in place. The Lacey District still suffers terribly from debt service payments, and the 40% debt service that was supposed to be given to the district from the state towards the solar bond payment, it has never been the full 40%. I wonder how many people know that. The Lacey School District is still over $28 million in debt. The credit card is maxed, and then the state pulls the rug out from under. It is so sad to see the SRECs today on the agenda sold for $210 tonight. They were supposed to be worth $1,000 I'm wondering, did the board make any attempt this year to do the self-evaluations, either on paper or via the NJSBA system? It should have been done in conjunction with the superintendent review that was due July 1st. And I also was wondering, is the district moving along on time with the NJQSAC report, Dr. Clark? Yes. That is moving along good. Because we don't want any to lose any coins just for you know not being on time with something so simple as that. We attended training uh, this past summer because two time is changing. Right. Um, now the people on the board um, have required training, and um, in February I found an Oprah request to the New Jersey School Board Association on the Oprah Machine website, and it requested transcripts of the Lacey board members by Mr. Razi. So I had decided to open them up and read them because one of them was my own and I found a couple of mistakes on it. Um, it's very important for the board members to complete their training in a timely manner 
and new board members are supposed to complete a training session prior to participating in a superintendent evaluation process. Um, year three training is supposed to be a student achievement course, and two people are due for that. And I have to say that over the three years that I went to workshop, there were hardly any other board members there with me, and a couple that came mostly came for social purposes. I didn't see them in any um, sessions, except once Mr. Miranda came and he attended a session back in October 2017. But workshop is a great place to take advantage of the many training sessions offered annually by the New Jersey School Board Association. And the district pays for us to go whether you attend or not. I know people have jobs and people are busy, but we get notice of workshop almost a year in advance. They tell us when the next one's gonna be. Even if you can't go the whole three days, it's very worthwhile to just attend even one day sessions at workshop. And Dr. Clark and I, you know, we ran into each other many times in different sessions. I ran into Mr. Wigley. Um, you know, I, I know the administrators go, but the board members need to be in some of the training sessions as well. I know time is a concern for everyone and people have jobs, but you take an oath of office to become a public servant, please make a commitment to this job, to the voters of this township, and most importantly, the students you serve. Student achievement is job one, and that can only be accomplished with proper training and commitment. Thank you. Please, we have to do something about Trenton or we are gonna continually lose aid. And if no one goes and no one says anything, they're just going to continue to take money away from this district. Well, Regina, I think you're making the assumption that nobody's saying. Excuse me? I think you're making the assumption that we haven't said. Did you send that letter to Sweeney's office or the governor? Just this year. Well, last year, well, last year at Delegate Assembly, a resolution was passed for the state not to take any aid away after a budget was passed. And you can see that resolution with school boards held almost nothing because they went ahead and did it anyway. Again, I was in shock, you know, because here we go, 200 delegates sit in a room, we pass a resolution and no one pays any attention to it. The school board association is supposed to have some clout, so we have to keep going. We cannot stop. I mean, we have to be unrelentless with the governor's office right now. We really do because things are not gonna get better. And the other, the other thing I wanted to mention too was your, um, I've heard this thing about communication a couple times. Right? I feel like I'm gonna see it on a sign somewhere no. in a couple weeks. But um, I just, I wanna let you know though, that even though we might not have had our community meetings for the past two months, the communication now compared to what it was like when you were here or what you remember, a lot different. Everything comes from, it's either coming from the, the DA or the super to the president to everybody else. Okay. There's texts every day, there's emails every day, there's phone calls every day. There's a lot that goes on okay, behind good. the scenes. So but I, when I, I don't feel that there's any issue with communications the way it used to, maybe it was in the past. Right, but as a member of the public and when you don't have committee meeting minutes, I can't review them. I, I understand That's that. That's the thing. You see, but this what, is a public body. Communication. Yeah. You said the board doesn't communicate. Right, but you have to communicate to the public as well. The only way you can is through board committee meeting minutes, okay? And we're missing three for this year, and it's August, okay? September or whatever you said is summer is going to go to. Uh, we pretty much know it's about done though, right guys? June, July, most of August are in a rear view mirror. Uh, we got a couple good weeks left, so let's soak up what we can in the sun and the sand. And uh, we'll see you guys real soon. Uh, you know, next time we sit down, it's a whole different deal. You know, school's back in. Um, hey, congratulations, Lacey, uh, for taking on Central. Congratulations, guys. Anybody who was up here got some big plays. I didn't watch, but. I'm sure it was cool. A lot of bruises. <laughs> Hurt for you guys after. <laughs> uh, Chief DeBella, awesome, awesome presentation. Thanks for uh, thanks for doing everything you do with us. 
Um, I know Charlie left already, but Charlie keeps us safe day in and day out. The three new class three officers, they look like fantastic guys. Um, Regina was saying she was happy to see, you know, school safety at the top of the agenda. I mean, that should be at the top of the agenda every month. I mean, you know, we do a lot of things over here, but school safety has got to be right, at, if not the top, it's got to be right there. We got to always be thinking about it, but you are doing a fantastic job keeping us safe. Thank you again. Uh, Mr. Palladino, nice to see you, like always. Um, I don't know what it is about you, but I was, I was one of those ones that he was the principal. And I remember like it was yesterday, being like a five-year-old kid or whatever you are in school, and he walks in and the guy looks absolutely unchanged for the last 30-something years. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's pretty amazing. It's really, I mean, yeah, he's always been such a cool guy. Uh, best of luck with the, with the Educational Foundation. I hope you get tons of volunteers with that. Um, and as far as uh, I am the alternate, the state alternate, uh, so I put it down. I wrote November 17th. I'll be there. I'll go to, I'll go to Mercer. Um, so anybody that wants to go along for a ride, let's go. But I'll be there for it. I know we missed the other ones, but I don't know who's the primary, but I'll take it. I'll do that one. All right, guys? So uh, we settled that. And uh, I'd say that's about it. So um, I'll pass it along. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Moraney. Uh, I'm not really going to repeat that much, but dear to my heart, Police department um, safety is definitely number one with us, with the kids and the teachers and the rest of the staff. Um, Chief, great job. I know uh, by talking to Superintendent Wigley and uh, Dr. Clark, you are the man. Okay, you you. This is your number one responsibility on top of everything else I can do, and it seems like we got three good guys. That are going to come on uh, protect our kids and staff. So uh, keep on top doing. Of the ones on top of once, yes. So keep doing. We keep doing. All right. Um, <coughs> to our staff, the uh, groundskeepers and uh, maintenance and stuff like that. A lot of people don't know, but we do have twelve-month employees, and even our ten-month employees work somewhat in the summer too. So uh, thank you, everybody that got the schools ready, uh, the staff, secretaries, administration, and the teachers that are getting ready for the new school year. Um, Education Foundation, that's something that uh, I want to get involved in. I, I was a little involved in, in the beginning, but uh, something good, something we need. Um, I talked to few people that have the foundations with school systems because they raise a lot of money for things that are outside budgets that we need for the kids and uh, for school. So good luck and then, like I said, I'll uh, help you out when I could. And um, that's about it. Thank you. Thank you very much. <coughs> Mr. Buddy. Thank you, President Walsh. Uh just to reiterate what everyone's been saying, uh, Chief, uh, thanks for coming tonight and uh, for your presentation. It's nice to see a fellow Belleville guy up there. You got to see a really <laughs> guy. I got another one in the audience there. Uh, um, besides uh, the safety issues, I want to thank the janitors and custodians. Everyone's just been working so hard to get the school district ready for another school year. Uh, crazy. I know the summer officially doesn't end until the 20th of September, but. Tell the kids that, all right? <laughs> they will not believe you. Uh, so anyway, just uh, looking forward to a great school year. Uh, the election ballots are, uh, the people that are running are out. Regina's running again. Rob and I are running. Uh, some new faces running. I just want to wish everybody uh, a non-contentious campaign, a friendly campaign. Let's keep it friendly. And uh, I know you will, Regina. Uh, but uh, just good luck to everybody. You know what? I think we're all in it for the right reasons. We want to, we want to be here uh, for the school district. We want to help the school district. We want to keep things moving positively in the right direction. Uh, and you know what? Uh, it's nice to see people get involved. Some new faces uh, on the ballot this year. Uh, and just good luck to everybody. And, and hopefully, uh, you know, we can all keep it clean. And, uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> And work the you know for 
we're, we're all in it together. You know, if you win or lose, I think we all want what's best for the school district and the community. Uh, Mr. Paladino, was it? Paladino? Yeah, uh, I, when you said 1969, you interviewed 1969, I said, this guy must sleep in a coffin. Because uh, he, must be, he must be a vampire. He, he, there's no way this guy got hired in 1969. Uh, I'm 50, and you look like you're 55, so I, I'm thinking 1969, you're going to get hired at 8 years old. <laughs> um, other than that, uh, it, good luck with the Lacey Foundation. I know Regina worked very hard to get it up and running, and uh, everyone else that, that worked with her, uh, I know some of the people that you're working with, and they're all fine people, and uh, just like run for... Uh, for board, just getting involved, and trying to move, and keep them moving in a positive direction. It's it's nice to see you get involved, and uh, welcome back to uh, the education part of the of the district. Uh, other than that, um, <coughs> Vanessa, now this is your second meeting. Is this your first <laughs> official <laughs> meeting? Actually, this is your first started, official. Uh, although you did do the last one. Uh, congratulations again, and, and uh, I, we all know you'll do a fine job here. Other than that, thank you. Enjoy the rest of your summer. <laughs> and uh, that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, first of all, congratulations. You turned it on. She's a, a great, just an awesome human. And it couldn't, no one could have the, could deserve the position more than her. I truly feel. So definitely awesome to have you here. Mr. Palatino, your energy is amazing, man. You know, like you, you, you give off such good vibes, and you're so appreciated. You know, and I love to hear your story. Usually, when people come up and talk, uh, for the short time I've been on the board, we're usually getting viciously attacked. But it was great to hear your positivity, and uh, I hope you know that you're appreciated. You know, like uh, it's just pretty awesome to have people like you out there, and for you to continue to to serve and, and do your part. I think is a great example not just myself, but to everybody. You know, uh, Chief DeBella, you're the man, bro. You know, we go back, and I, I, I know Chief DeBella for a long time, and I can honestly say, like, uh, not just an awesome chief, but just a great, great human being. And, uh, you know, my kids attend this, this district, uh, and, and, and I wouldn't, I trust them here, knowing that he's overlooking everything. Uh, and that says a lot. I, I truly trust him, and, and I'm thankful for you, and we're all thankful for you. So thank you so much for the work you do. We know you're going above and beyond. Uh, the custodians, you're so appreciated as well. It's a thankless job, but we need you just as much as we need anybody. And uh, thank you to everybody here. And uh, I know Dr. Clark is not ready to let go of the summer. For me, summer is 12 months out of the year, so it's no problem. But uh, I hope everybody else enjoys it as well. <laughs> Thanks. Applause. I'm going to try not to be long-winded, but there's a lot that uh, I, I do want to say. First, I'll start off with school security. I think um, in light of the events of recent years, this board particularly um, took great care um, and, and put a lot of passion in, behind, in providing as much security as we can for our staff and students. And, um, you know, Chief DeBella, you're right, you started at the same time as uh, former Superintendent Wigley. And, um, you guys work very closely together to help us achieve that mission, and we could not have done it without um, you, your team, township governance. I thank uh, Mayor Giuliano and Committeeman Quinn, um, all coming together to put uh, forth what we have tonight. Now, Mr. Caputo, a retired Tuckard and cop, did don a central uniform a few weeks ago when he played, right? I think I recognized him. So I, I thought he looked familiar, but... Um, <laughs> You know, when you're, when you're up there introducing and given the background of all these gentlemen, 25, 30 years law enforcement, law enforcement experience, chiefs, firearms instructors, um, you know, sheriff's office, CIA, we have some of the best, the brightest, most accomplished law enforcement professionals supporting our staff and our students. So I don't think anybody can question what this board has done um, working together with our police department to provide safety for our students and our staff. So I thank you very much for that. Um, Mr. Palladino and the Lacey Township Education Foundation, 
So, Mr. Elliott was my principal, but after I heard you speak tonight, I feel like you're my principal, too. You know, my parents moved down here in 1972, um, shortly after you got here, and I've been here ever since. And, um, you know, it's great to see you're right, that sense of family, that sense of community. I think that's what drew Rob and I here to do this, and volunteer, um, and it's just special. So I would hope that anybody that could come out and volunteer and be a part of that, if you mentioned that I would like to maybe do something there as well in the future, to get a little less busier. Um, but I, I think it's a fantastic thing that you're doing, Mr. Biava, you're part of it, Regina for spearheading it and running it, Donna McAvoy for who's not here tonight. Um, it's a great thing that you guys are, are doing, so we really appreciate it. Um, we can give you easy things to do. Did I forget anybody? We can give you sure. easy things to do. Uh, I'm sure you can give me things. I don't know if I got the bandwidth, but I'll, I'll, I'll give you a shot. <laughs> um, 700, what was it, what'd you say, 700 staff members, how many square, 60,000 square feet of building? 650,000 square feet. So, you know, custodians and staff to, to get these campuses ready for school is an undaunting task. So we appreciate everything that you've done throughout the summer. Um, I know we just came from new hire orientation. Stacy, you're sitting up there, classmate from way back when. Um, it's nice to see all the new staff and uh, teachers that we've hired getting ready to come in and, and make contributions to the district, so good luck. And I think I'm going pretty quick, so I feel like I'm almost done. If I forgot anything, you can just stop. So thank you again, everybody, and enjoy the rest of the summer. Thank you. Unfortunately, I get to do a, a whole lot of repeating that pretty much everybody said, but I, I want to hit the important points too, though. Um, the class three officers are, are huge. Um, I think all together now in what I'll call security, five folks. Um, that's a lot more than we've had a couple years ago when all we had was um, Mr. Uh, Bank. No, uh, oh, Carl Car 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 Bullock. He was our first guy. And, uh, so, yeah, then we had a blue, now we've got five. And uh, the goal is to have six next year, so right, the following year. Uh, if we can fit in the budget uh, without one officer in school. So, I mean, thank you very much for working with us. And for pushing it, too. I know it's, it's a passion of yours. And, you know, we tried to get you everything we could. You guys, close to Not done. Yeah. Not done. But yes, also with Mr. Quinn and, uh, and the mayor, too, and Lisa, they have huge help in putting the whole thing together for us. So we thank all of you guys. Um, the yeah, security for anybody that uh, listening or watching or whatever, anybody has any questions about security, we'll, we'll tell you what we can tell you. We don't want to let out the whole playbook, but it honestly is, you know, there's one and one A, or I don't know, one and one. I mean, education and safety, those, they, they go hand in hand to happen. Um, so we're doing everything we can along with a couple of other festivals and things like that. So um, if anybody has questions about that, feel free to call up and ask. Um, summer's kind of over. But I just want to say welcome back to all the students in the stand. Everybody say that, yeah. Um, uh, school will start before our next board meeting, so I wanted to say welcome back to everybody. Um, looking forward to a huge year. Uh, with academics and improving every year, athletics, our clubs, everything. We love to see the kids in here learning and having fun uh, safely. Um, Education Foundation, thank you for coming back, Mr. Valdino. Thank you. I, I, I do remember you from the days, I, I gotta be honest with you, I looked up uh, looked up to you and I respected you, so thank you for coming back. Thank you. Um, I guess that's about, about all I have to say. I think this is the best cover we've ever had, <laughs> especially this piece right here because we're holding on to the trophy. Um, for those of you that don't know, uh, Vice President Giordano and myself both played both play the game as well as our board attorney. And they cry for the next year. Yeah, we're there. Last year, I, tell you. I, had, I had to make sure I went to uh, Mr. Miranda's graduation party to use the pain after. The freezer made a lot of money selling so ice to the guys. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot of fun. We did win, so we're up to the one. So, but that's about all I have. So. Excuse me, President Cole, before you continue with the rest of the meeting, I have a housekeeping issue I just noticed. You know, I'm very good at proofreading. Um, the resolutions on page one, labeled A through E, do not match the agenda within. Item B is missing on the agenda unless you want to move up. Do you have that, Mr. DeJoy? Yeah, I just wrote that down. You saw it too? All good. 
Okay. All right. Just checking it out. Yes, sir. Yeah. Sure. I don't get the agenda three days in advance, so I only have a couple hours to look at it before I get this. Thank you for those. Excited to be back to work with the staff, um, the families, and most of all the students in this district uh, once again. So I uh, just want to say thank you to my parents, thank you to my wife. Sorry. <laughs> I know the feeling that happens to me all the time. She also happens to be expecting her first child. So. Uh, Student suspension. 
Motion is to move that the board rescind the suspension of student ID 903097 effective Tuesday, September 5th, 2018. Move. Motion. Move. All right. I'll we'll call vote. Mr. Riggs. Mr. Glass. Mr. Morandi. Yes. Mr. Sledi. Yes. Mr. Giordano. Yes. Mr. Claus. Yes. Thank you. The second is entitled Precision of Student Suspension slash Out of District Placement. Move that the board rescind the suspension of student ID 903990 with the student being transferred to a New Jersey public school district that is able to accommodate the court ordered restrictions effective Tuesday, September 5th, 2018. Move. Mr. Riggs? Yes. Mr. Blass? Yes. Mr. Morandi? Yes. Mr. Sledi? Yes. Mr. Giordano? Yes. Mr. Claus? Yes. 